Good day everyone. I'm Michael. And I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Create a Xamarin form relative layout in XAML. 2. Position and overlap elements. 3. Apply constraints based on another element. So what is relative layout? A relative layout is used to position and size children relative to properties of the layout or sibling elements. This allows UIs to be created that scale proportionally across device sizes. In addition, unlike some other layout classes, relative layout is able to position children so that overlap. Related layout is more powerful than absolute layout. Because we can apply constraints or restriction to position or size of the element relative to another element. And this give us more control over position and size of the element. Now let's open our Visual Studio and do some coding. In this sample, I inserted two box views. Now, what if we want the gray box view to be always 25 units away from the bottom of the maroon box, regardless of the size or position of the maroon box view changes? If we are using an absolute layout, the solution is to change the layout bounds value for each box view. Because the positioning of children element in absolute layout rely only on its parent. But in relative layout, we can set constraints and position the gray box view base on the maroon box view's height or position so that it's always 25 units away from each other. Now let's modify this code. And change it to relative layout. Here, we will add one or more attached bindable properties of the relative layout. The relative layout class defines the following properties. We have bounds constraint, width constraint, height constraint, x constraint, and y constraint. Let's start with the width constraint. We want the width of this box view to be the same as the width of its parent, in this case, the relative layout. As for the value of the width constraint, we use the constraint expression, which is a XAML markup extension. This markup extension is typically used to relate the position and size of a child within a relative layout to its parent or to a sibling. Remember, if we are using a markup extension, we need to put it inside curly braces. Constraints expression class defines the following properties. First is constant, element name, factor, property, and type. So in this code, we input three properties of the constraint expression. The code means that the width of this maroon box will be the width of its parent, in this case, the relative layout, multiplied by 1. That's why the maroon box occupies the width of the screen of the device. Since its parent, which is the relative layout, is by default occupies the whole screen of the device. Now let's set its height to about one-third of its parent height. Again we set its type to relative layout and target its height property then multiply it to the value of the factor, which is 0.33. If you look at the result, there is nothing special about it. We can do this in absolute layout or in grid layout. So let me show you where the relative layout gets powerful.
As you can see, the width of the gray box is now equal to the width of its parent and is currently located in the upper corner, which is the default value. The default size of the box view when not specify is 40 by 40. Since we have not set its height yet, its current height now is 40 units. If we want to set a fixed value to its size, we can pass an absolute value to it. So let's type in relative layout.height constraint and set it to 50 units. There are two formats in setting the property of relative layout like width or height. It's either we pass a constraint expression, just like what we did to its width, or an absolute value. Now let's position the gray box 25 units below from maroon box. This time, we set it to relative to view. This means we want to apply the Y constraint or the Y position of gray box view base on the maroon box view's position. This is something we cannot do in absolute layout. We can only relate its position base to its parent. So the type is related to view. Now which view or element? In this case, we want to relate it to the maroon box. Let's go to maroon box view and give it a name or an identifier. Let's set it to header. Then we can now relate the gray box view to maroon box view. So type an element name, then header. Next, what property of the header or the maroon box view we would like to access? Since we want to position the gray box view 25 units below the maroon box view, we need to get its height. Then add 25 units to it by setting the constant property to 25. And by the way, this constant value can be negative. You can see now that our gray box view is now 25 units below from maroon box view. So if change the height property of the maroon box view, the gray box view automatically moves and maintains its distance of 25 units below the maroon box view. So with relative layout, we can position or size of the element base on another element's position or size. If you notice, using relative layout requires a bit more code to position the element. Before I end the video, just a quick tip. Avoid using a relative layout whenever possible. It will result in the CPU having to perform significantly more work. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone.